<clears throat> Good evening, everybody. I bring this uh, regular meeting of council to order for January the 16th, 2024. Results of the agenda for January 16, 2024. Regular meeting of council to be adopted. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor Midwood. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> we have Deputy Mayor uh, Morio attending by video tonight, as well as CFO Gadita. Result of the minutes of the January 2nd, 2024 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by uh, Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving on to four. Uh, 4.1, <coughs> the open delegation on hotel and short-term rentals. Um, just a reminder for those who are going to speak tonight, um, we just need you to state your name and your address and or your business that you represent. Typically for delegations, we allow for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes per delegate. So with that, I will begin with anybody in the presentation. <clears throat> Good evening, um, Murray Mullen, uh, 101 Champlain Bay, Swan River. Uh, I work for the Scales group of businesses and also the accountant for the Westwood Inn Limited Partnership and I am uh, been asked to speak on behalf of the local hotel businesses and um, if I missed any points or concerns other hotel owners may also contribute after I am done. Uh, this is our second discussion on the accommodation tax with the town council. Obviously the first attempt was not overly useful and seems to have fallen on deaf ears as it seems that council is still trying to pursue this. Firstly, in order to have a fair playing field, town council should be spending their time on an equitable tax on Airbnbs. Right now, Airbnb <coughs> owners pay residential tax rates, residential water and sewer rates, no commercial fees on garbage and recycling, and are charged no business taxes. This should be council's first priority. However, if council does not decide to add additional taxes to the Airbnb hosts, do not think that the hotel owners are in favor of a combination tax, because we are not. Now on to the tax, uh, accommodation tax concerns. But going back to the Airbnbs, I think that that's something that council needs to look at. Because if you're thinking of bringing on an, uh, an accommodation tax without addressing the Airbnb situation, and I understand there's between 11 and 20 in the town of Swan River. And if you don't address those that situation first and foremost, then adding another 5% tax onto hotel room costs just makes it more equitable for the Airbnbs. And those are being used on a regular basis. So, so now on to the accommodation tax concerns. As I may remind each of you councillors, you are elected by the residents of this town, therefore you work for the residents. It is your responsibility to look after the finances of the town to the best of your ability, as well as putting the residents' concerns first. I would like you to think that for a moment about this and honestly look us in the eyes and say that over the years you have been doing the best job for the residents of Swan River. And I'd like to ask a question. What is the town's borrowing capacity and how much debt does the town carry right now? Does anybody know? We'll stick to the accommodation tax and then we can get an answer for that later, okay? Okay, but, but <clears throat> all of this, yeah. when, you, when you say that, all of this comes into play. So I'd like to know what the borrowing capacity is and how much debt does the town carry right now? I understand the number is $16 million and we presently have about seven million dollars in debt. Correct me if I'm wrong. Back in 2018, council, and I may add that some of the current councillors were councillors back then, 
raised water rates at approximately 120 percent. They used the excuse that we hadn't had a water increase and we needed it. We were told that the lagoon was at its capacity and we needed to be done immediately. To date, this project has not been completed. Concerned residents came to discuss this increase with council. And at, at a secondary meeting, when we, went, when we came to council, we said this was not affordable. And at a secondary meeting, outside of the council chambers, we, we uh, had a, a discussion and, and it was raised that increasing the rates were going to increase, cause a, a $300,000 to $400,000 surplus each year. And they were, at council they told us that this was needed for the lagoon. Had to be done. To this date, nothing has been done to the lagoon. And after the additional meeting, a couple of the councillors at that time, and one that's still here in particular, told us, we've screwed up. What can we do to fix this? I had advised them as to what could be done, and they said that they would look into it. Nothing was done. The increases carried on, and where has the money gone? So from 2018 to 2023, where has the surplus from the water increases been applied to? I looked at the 2022 financial statement and noticed that the water and sewer reserve lagoon, pardon me, the water, the water lagoon reserve account had $101,342. $300,000 to $400,000 surplus from 2018 to 2023, and we've got $101,000 in a lagoon reserve, and the lagoon was supposed to be done? Where's all the money gone? Town revenues in the general fund from 2020 to 2022 has increased approximately 24.2%. In 2022, Murray, one... Murray, sorry to interrupt, but you're talking about the, the uh, accommodation tax. I realize that, Lance, but all of this comes into play. Let me, let me carry on. What I'm, what I'm trying to explain to you guys is you guys are trying to push through another tax, and do we really need it? And if you do put it through a tax, what is it going for? A good example is this water tax. Back then, and, and you were, I think, councillor at the time, back then, this was supposed to be used for a, a lagoon that had to be fixed at that time. This is five years later, and it's not, the lagoon hasn't been done, and the water increases have been increased, and where's the money gone? Has it gone frivolously? And that's why all of this comes into play. So when you say this doesn't, we're talking about accommodation tax, this all comes into play as to why do you need to increase Carry it. Carry on. All right. Total revenues in the, uh, I mentioned 24.2%. In 2022, $1,548,689 were transferred into reserve funds. That means that that the town basically had a surplus of $1.5 million of revenues that they, they took in over and above the expenses to run the town and the money left over was put into a reserve fund. I, there, was, there was a tax, sanit, uh, tax uh, fund of $480,000 that was started. I think it was a stabilization fund, a tax stabilization fund of $480,000. Landfill, $437,000, and the other, fee, uh, other reserves went into that. These are amounts or surplus funds that received from taxpayers or through grants that the town didn't need that particular year. But taxes have increased, and you guys are looking at an, a, an accommodation tax to take more revenue. If you're putting money into reserves, in this day and age, why do we need another tax? So if we're currently not spending revenue funds now, again, like I mentioned, why do we need another tax? According to a couple of councillors, when asked about the accommodation tax, they said, every community and city in Manitoba are charging this tax. Swan River 
Might as well carry on, and might as well do it as well. Some counselors also state that the majority of the hotel revenues are received from recreation purposes. Did they research that? No. Actually, less than 5% of revenue is received from recreational purposes. The main source of revenue is made up from contractors, Prairie Mountain Health, First Nation Bands, First Nation Health Authorities, and Child and Family Services. If contractors are paying an additional tax, they will either look to stay somewhere else, or will, they will add, increase their job bid amount to recover cover this cost. And what is that going to do? It's going to result in the bid, whoever is doing the thing, passing it on to the taxpayers of Swan River. So it's not going to be the, the contractors that are paying it, as some of the councillors think. It's going to be, the end result is going to be the taxpayers. As I mentioned in the previous meeting, COVID took a major toll on all hotels. And these hotels are just starting to recover their losses. Some hotels had to borrow large additional funds to cover their day-to-day -day expenses. These loans funds need to be repaid and increased interest rates in the last year have added to the cost. These additional funds come out of any profits that are made from the hotels. And the last couple of years during COVID, I can say that we were down to about 25 to 30% of our normal revenues. And you guys want to look at a tax, adding a tax onto it. Minimum wages has increased at least three times in the last couple of years, which has resulted in increased operational costs for hotels. Insurance has re increased 40 to 50% over the last few years as well. Water, or I understand that the uh, commercial um, garbage and recycling, I think that increased this year slightly as well. Business taxes increased slightly as well. If council decides to pass this accommodation tax, hotels will have additional expenses on for collecting and administrating this, this said tax. Do you think it's just gonna, we're gonna just collect it for you and there's not gonna be any additional cost to us? Some hotel software systems do not have the capability to add on additional tax into their system, resulting in the hotel to purchase new software, which can cost anywhere between five and $15,000. Is the town going to pay for the new software for the each hotel to administer this? I don't think so. Council members also state that this tax is passed on to the customers. It doesn't affect the hotel. And doesn't. However, this tax will increase room rates, which will discourage customers to want to stay there, resulting in lower room sales. So let's assume each hotel loses 10 rooms per month at an average cost of, say, $150 a room, which would result in $1,500 a month times 12 months is $18,000 of revenue that's going to be lost by the hotels. <coughs> is the town going to pay for the decrease in the hotel room sales? I don't think so. Who's going to suffer that? The hotels. Has the council thought of that? I don't think so. Are you councillors aware right now how much each hotel contributes to the town of Swan River? With taxes, business taxes, water and sewer, garbage and recycling. Mr. White, Mrs. Boychuk, Mr. Morio. Does anybody have any idea? You guys are counselors. You want to bring this in. How much do you think that they contribute a year? Do you have any number? I have some comments, but my time will come. Do you have any numbers? I, I don't think so. The large hotels contribute between $75,000 and $100,000 per year, with the smaller hotels contrib contributing slightly less. Do you not think that's enough? And what do they get for that? Out of, the, out of over the last number of years, with the increases in all of everything, what does the hotels get for, for paying those large sums of, of dollars? 
When is the, how much is enough for hotels and their owners to pay? And are they going to benefit from it? Absolutely not. It's going to cost them. Why is the hotel industry being the only one taxed? If our customers are being taxed to stay in our rooms, why aren't restaurants not forced to tax customers for eating their food? Or why not furniture stores that come, up, come into town? Why are they not for purchasing items? Why don't, they have a, why don't we have a, a, a tax on those? Or additional taxes that people come in to buy groceries? Why don't we tax them? Hotels sponsor and donate several thousand dollars to different sporting teams, recreational activities, and service clubs. With the additional tax and the lost revenue the hotels will incur, those funds will be reduced drastically. And so all of those teams and sporting clubs and service clubs are going to suffer. <coughs> do we ask them, or do we tell them when they come knocking on our door, go talk to the town of Swan River. They'll, they'll pick up the, the, the extra that, that we're losing out on. Does the council think that adding an additional tax to the hotel services will, will be their golden goose and their major contributing factor to building a new arena? Then I think they need to reevaluate this entire situation and find a fairer basis so all residents will contribute on an equal basis. Don't just pick one industry and think that that's what we're going to do and use that to fund. I don't think that's the proper way. In closing, an individual presented me with some stats of communities in Manitoba of similar, similar size to Swan River. Nipawa, the largest at 5,685 people. Carmen, <coughs> the smallest at 3,114 people. The average household ranged from 61,000 to 138,000. Guess what? Swan River won the title of the lowest income per household. That's something for us to be proud of. We're the lowest income in these various small communities and we want to add more taxes. We are not adding more workers, working taxpayers to our community, but instead we're growing senior citizens, which are on fixed incomes, and non-working families. That's what our community is becoming. Council needs to review these stats seriously and instead of trying to tax residents and businesses to death, maybe look at, look at getting your expenses in order. I hope my time has not fallen on deaf ears again and council will reconsider this unfair accommodation tax. If you are still considering on punishing the hotels with this tax, the hotel owners ask that you are presented with actual constructive reasons why you want to continue to pursue this and not use the beneficial excuse of because every other community is doing it. That doesn't hold water with us. Thank you, and I am open to any questions or concerns. Thank you, Marty. Do you have something that you can present to us, like that report? I can give you yeah. everything that I've And I then can. any of the questions that you've had before about any of the capacities and all that, we'll get that to you. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions? This is not a time for debate, but you can ask questions. Go ahead. <coughs> Yeah. Do you have a list uh, signed of all the ho business hotels in town that said you can speak for them? Question one. I have. Do you have the letter? Do you have letters? <coughs> letters for, yeah. So each of the hotels have given um, a letter to council expressing their their their, their displeasure in here. You know, I have signed. petitions signed. Petitions, okay. Do, is there anybody? Do you have a letter? No. <coughs> and we also have, um, they've got some as well, but we've got several letters, petitions signed by customers that have come to our hotels over the last period of time when we found out this, that, um, uh, that they disagree with it. So I've got the two letters, one from Super 8 and one from the Westwood. The other ones were we're going to write, I'm not sure whether they do. We all met yesterday and everybody, we all decided that Murray was going to speak on our behalf. That's fair. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think that's the most important right now. Right? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 We, we met yesterday, and they all uh, uh, asked me if I would speak on their behalf. Okay, thank you. You say they all. Uh, is there a number? There's four uh, hotels: so Super Eight, Westwood, Timberland, new and the New country. New Country, and and, and, and then oh, per, pardon me, and uh, at Thunder Hill. Okay. So all five of them. I have to comment on that. Me. I've never been attacked, and the question you suggested that we can't look in the mirror because we're not doing our best. You suggested that we're frivolous, that was a term you used, you're not doing what you should do. I take a lot of offense to that. I think everybody sitting around here is doing their best. Is it perfect? Far from it, Murray. But suggesting that we're frivolous and we don't care is absolutely inappropriate. Mr. White, I, I bring it back to my, my question or my comment in regards to my to my uh, presentation. In 2022, the town took in revenue of and $1.6 million approximately went into reserve funds. And what that means is they didn't need the $1.6 million of revenue. That was money that was not spent and was put into reserve funds for future. That $1.6 million it, it multiplies by about nine times that could be used in the community. The same thing with the water rates, 120% increase in water. And the, the council was told that they were going to end up with a three hundred dollars to $400,000 surplus every single year. Mr. Jacobson, I'm sure that, that you can vouch for that. And you refused to go back to the water sewer, sewer uh, services board and ask for a reduction in it, you put it through and, and it was supposed to be used for the lagoon. Five years later, the lagoon has not been done. The increase in the cost to build the lagoon has, is, has increased probably double. And we've got $100,000 in our lagoon reserve fund. So where did all the money go? All I'm asking is, is can you say that you guys have administered everything and, and, and haven't been frivolous in what you're saying? Obviously, these numbers don't okay, lie. So I just want to end it there. I don't yeah. want to get into the debate about the, the budgets. We have an opportunity yeah. time for that as well. Councilor Medwin. I have a question, two questions, actually. I'm new to this, so just to clarify, when you're referencing um, 106 million going into reserves that's coming from a surplus at the end of the year it's coming from the general fund and use what municipalities do is when they get all of their income and their expenses at the end of the year to bring it down to to zero whatever money is left over they dump it into the reserve fund so if you look at the i have the 2022 financial i get it every single year and the annual surplus is zero but what ends up happening was there was one point, just about $1.6 million of money dumped into the reserves. So weren't spur, spent on, on town expenses, they were put into reserves. And like I said, $480,000 was put into a reserve uh, called a tax stabilization reserve fund. It started off at zero and they transferred $474,000 into it. Okay, let's stick to the... Okay. Um, okay. Your second question? My second question is, uh, just to those in the audience, did Murray miss any points that you wanted brought forward on behalf of the hotels, or has he covered everything? Yeah, I would like to add up some... Uh, okay, I'll let you come forward. So, uh, yeah. 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 Your name. yeah, so my name is uh, Amrinder Brad. So I came to Swan River uh, last year, in 2022, uh, like in August. And I uh, bought Temple Land. I invested like more than a million dollars in this town. And uh, still, like, uh, I'm struggling uh, with all the profits. So, if you are thinking hotel industry is so lucrative, it's not. So, if uh, we are adding up uh, the accommodation tax, it will affect the business. So, uh, like, the population of Swan River is uh, close to like 5,000 from uh, last few years. And likely, it's going to be the same for next few years as well. So I don't think it's a good decision. Otherwise, uh, like, 
I have to sell the business and I have to go back home. So, so we are trying to uh, bring life to the hotels in this town so more people can come in if uh, it's like heavy on the pockets, then we'll be sorry for that, yeah. So thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Is there anybody else? Yeah, we are a dealer for Six Forest Pack Road, Swan River. So just like I mentioned before, or let me have the discussion before, you know, Don, you said, you know, you wanted to talk to us, you know, you wanted us to be on board. You definitely knew that we're not on board at that meeting. We went ahead anyways. So I'm not even sure us all sitting here and we're making really good points, whether it's going to have any effect on anything. I don't think it really matters whether he asks all the other guys here or not. We're here, right? Should be quite clear to ask that question. So when is it gonna be enough? It's a question to you guys. <clears throat> Everything's been going up. Revenue's been going down. What, what do you think, we're just gonna keep going if, if that keeps going on? Water goes up, taxes go up, recycling goes up, everything goes up. Does anything, like what about services? What, what have you guys done for us, for businesses to be here, to create the revenue that we're creating already. So now, for creating revenue, we're being penalized. After all these years of struggling to keep alive, like, does that even make sense? And it's simple. When is it gonna be enough? <coughs> That's all I have to say. Anybody else? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I'm Maureen McDill, 521 Duncan Crescent. I run the Thunder Hill Motel. So most of this tax that went into the different places in Manitoba, they didn't start off as a 5% tax. It started off as a $3 tax or a $5 tax, and now we're we're just gonna, if this goes through, we're just gonna start a 5% tax. That's quite a big jump from $3, $5 to 5%. So my recommendation is not to have this 5% tax. And if by chance something happens that it's going to go through, my recommendation is to go to a dollar figure and not to penalize the person for the five days they're there, but perhaps a $3 for the whole time or a $5, that, that's how they used to do it. So I'm thinking on when you're paying like $110 and you add on another 5% onto the 12%, you are paying 17%. That is a lot of money for these people. And I think that's not fair, especially day by day, because some people are here for five days, 10 days. And any of my people that come on a regular basis, they aren't very happy about it, so thank you. Thank you. Anything further? <clears throat> Council? Go ahead. I, I can see the frustration in there. And I, I've been on the same boat as you. I've, I've had uh, mining levies, uh, rehabilitation tax on travel, and like that. At the same time, I, and again, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a bad idea. I do think that we need you on board. We need your input into this, how to use it properly. So it, promotes your business, not hinders. So that's the key to it. I do like the Thunder Hills idea of just a flat rate, less bookkeeping, less everything. So I would probably be looking at tabling this motion to straighten that out in my perspective. I do, I will be voting in favor of this. I think in the long run, the town of Swan River needs to show you where this is going, what it is doing, and how is it promoting. If we can't answer that question, then why do we have it? My two cents. <coughs> Anybody else? Okay, well then I close the, uh, the delegation and council will proceed with the agenda. I thank everybody else for coming out tonight and Ms. Mullen will get the, those answers for you as well, okay? <coughs> so, after all of this discussion, there's only one counselor that's that's 
that's commented on, or pardon me, two have made comments on it. That's their prerogative. And I, I realize that. But then when everybody leaves, where are we at? <laughs> well, you can stay through the, the meeting and wow. find out that. It, you know, it's, that been, it's a public meeting. You're yeah. more than welcome to stay or stay or find out after the meeting, too. <clears throat> uh, Councilor Medwin. Yeah. Uh, I hope you do either stick around or tune in to the replay because I will have to speak to it when the motion comes forward, but I am not in favor. So if you are interested in my reasons for why that is, the time to say that is when the motion comes forward. Okay, I, I don't understand how you think this is going to come our business. I can't hear you. I don't understand I can't how, hear you guys either. how oh, you I'm think sorry. this is going to promote our business. Like, I don't understand that. Like you just said, how, how we're going to promote ours. Like, we're basically just asking people for more money. And, and, I, and we go back to that same issue. If, if you're thinking that it's going to promote, you're going to help promote our hotels, then why don't we charge it on restaurants and then we can help promote the restaurants? Or we can re report, help promote the businesses in town. Because if we lose, and you guys, are, if you lose a room, you're going to, and you charge 5% on $150, that's seven, seven dollars and fifty cents you guys are you're going to lose out on we're losing out on a hundred and fifty dollars and if somebody comes here for cataract surgery that's on a fixed income and they see that the rates have been increased and they they decide you know what i'm not going to bother staying i'm going to go home and drive home not only have we lost the hundred and fifty dollars of our revenue but the restaurants have lost the revenue for for their meals maybe they're going to shop at our, our stores or something like that. So we're also going to lose, lose, lose that. But you, you've got, council has this, this mindset of, they don't look at, at expenses and say, geez, you know, we've got to fine tune our expenses down to a fine tooth comb because we are an older community. Our tax base is, is, is not increasing. And so instead of, like it, a good politician, they always say, it's easy to spend other people's money. And each one of you guys don't have any, any uh, irons in this, or uh, in, in, this, in, this, in this business. But, and, and so it's not gonna affect you if you charge 5% or 10% to the hotels. It's not gonna cost you out of pocket nothing, absolutely nothing. But it's these people here that are running the businesses that are trying to keep Swan River viable that you're taking money out of their pockets. And like Yurk said, when is enough? Enough. You guys just seem like, oh, it's only 5%, and everybody else does it. I'm gonna vote in favor of it. That's a good good reason. And to me, that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Anyways, that's uh, it. Councillor, or student councillor, Um, Well, I wasn't, I'm relatively new to the council. And I wasn't here when I was when all of this discussion was started, um, but I'm just I'm 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 asking myself, why is this being considered in the first place? Um, just I I don't know. Just the idea of um, somebody who wants to stay in a hotel for a few days has to pay another fee or not another fee, but like there there has to be another payment on top of the service they're paying for, which is like the room, etc. Um, I guess what I'm asking right now is um, what is the reason <coughs> for the tax, like the necessity for the tax? We can't get it, like we'll be discussing that in, in the resolution when we get to that point. Okay, okay, okay. I see. Actually, just one more thing. Like when you say, like, you know, we're not sure yet what we're going to spend this tax on and it's going to help us. Well, I'll guarantee you, you're not going to spend it on any of us on any tourism. Guaranteed. So, first of all, if you're going to implement the tax before I start charging more money, maybe I should figure out where I'm putting it and at least let us know where you're putting it. And I think we all know it's not going to come back to us. You're not going to promote tourism. I think that's probably clear already because, like you mentioned, we need infrastructure, right? More infrastructure. More infrastructure here. And more. So okay, one more, and then we have to close off the delegation. 
Uh, section 32 of the bylaw actually states, in any given year, the accommodation tax will be placed in a reserve to be used for recreation and active living. So it's already being determined that 100% of that money is to go towards recreation and active living. Isn't that where the water money was supposed to go? Uh, you're out of order. So it's not okay, going it's to go to recreation. So, so, so in other words, what it is, is it's, it's for okay. the... So the we'll, new tonight arena. you guys discuss it more and then will you give it another reading? Is that what tonight is about? Or? Tonight, if uh, the reading is passed, then it goes before the minister of the department. Right. right. The governor. The governor. Yeah. It's already done anyway. <clears throat> so there's two readings already been made. This is the third reading? No, this is the second reading. Second reading? And then it goes to where? Uh, the lieutenant governor has to have approval. And do we have a... Can we have a... I'll go at them. Yes. That maybe they have some common sense. Yes, I have to provide all the notes of the discussions tonight. And so then, how do we get a hold of them so that we can? You get a hold of me. I can provide that information. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm putting you on notice that I'd like to be notified so I can get a hold of them. Okay. I can't. There's one at a time. Sorry. Does it have to be unanimous? No. Between you? No. No. All right. So we're going to move on and we'll close off the delegation. Okay, so moving on to seven seven point one. <clears throat> Result the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Uh, there's mention of a meeting with the bylaw officer regarding uh, sidewalk snow clearing in commercial highway zones. What was that pertaining to? What was Mr. Harvey. Uh, so on the sidewalk north of, or east of 10th Ave North, <laughs> Uh, the town had been arranging to have that cleared, but in the policy, it's up to commercial businesses to have that cleared. Uh, so we're just reaching out to the businesses, letting them know about the bylaw, and giving them until March 1st to arrange for their own clearing of that uh, sidewalk. Repeat that. Where does it start? It's uh, north of Main Street, and it runs east of 10th Ave. Like 10th Ave North, and that goes east to Highway 10. So basically, RCMP East? Yeah, to McDonald's. Okay, further discussion? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you also mentioned potential cost uh, lagoon. So I am, my questions were to that section was, what are the potential costs for the new lagoon and how long do we have until we absolutely need the new lagoon and what do we have in the reserves for it? Uh, so don't, if you don't have that information here, that can be saved for a discussion on Kyle because you need to stick to the question. <coughs> yeah, I can pull up what the reserve is or see if the folk can need it. Can, it's 156,000 okay. in the reserve. And uh, we had a meeting uh, to look at, because uh, we were initially looking at a SAGR system within the current lagoon uh, footprint, but uh, from the testing that they've done, there wasn't, the permeability was too high to meet current standards, so the current lagoon can't be used. So that's what our original plan was. Um, and so they're just doing some testing, uh, remolding some samples, and it was marginal, but remolding wouldn't work very well because then you're trying to remold or repack the clay in an existing lagoon while trying to operate that lagoon. So this was with the Water Services Board and with Tetra Tech, and uh, <coughs> sorry, so the discussion from that, because it 
can't use the existing one, which that was our assumption was that we'd be able to use it, but this testing determined otherwise. So now they're going to do a desktop study to look at sites around Swan where there's uh, potential oral sources or in situ clay that has the permeability to build the liner. And then a uh, proposal would go forward from that. But essentially, the clay that is at the current site is not high plastic enough to meet uh, the current regulations if we were to build a lagoon. So to do an upgrade won't work. We need to look at a, somewhere around town where we can build a new lagoon. Yeah, that's getting into way too deep for this uh, discussion here. For the discussion, all in favor? It's scary. <clears throat> 7.2. Resolved the December 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Van report be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Yeah, on the total revenue of fourteen thousand five hundred forty-two nine, <coughs> is this meeting our twenty percent of operational costs? Twenty percent. Yeah, my understanding is we're supposed to be bringing in a revenue of equal to twenty percent of our operational costs in order to qualify for the grant funding. So your question. The fourteen thousand in revenue. Yeah. Does that meet the twenty percent requirement for the grant? Yes. CFO Gadita. <clears throat> I would have to get back to you. Please do. Okay, move it on then to uh, council uh, reports. Uh, Councillor Bobbin. Thank you, Your Worship. <coughs> uh, I was at the call meeting on January 9th. Uh, we talked about some landfill measurement, recycling of the landfill. A uh, couple quick questions. Um, I'm under the understanding that we have some renters at, out there now at the uh, <coughs> recycling building. Do we get in touch with our insurance company to make sure we can rent? Uh, <coughs> I believe the. I guess it's something you can look into. I just know. Yeah, my, we can. Personally, we can. myself, it, it, you have to have liability insurance off that. To cover <coughs> so I think it's something we can look into. We can definitely look into. Okay. Uh, just to let everybody know, Thursday night is elections at the watershed. I'll be let my name stand for chair of. Uh, Upper Swan Lobster Creek, and we'll let you know the details after it. Uh, it. I'll have some comments on some of the recycling in my memory. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Medwood. I had a Swan Valley Communities at Care meeting on January 3rd, and um, January 4th and 10th was Community Safety Well Being meetings. January 9th was Tom's meeting, which is Transportation Option Network for Seniors. Uh, topic for that uh, think tank was accessible and affordable transportation for our seniors. And uh, on the 9th, I attended the CAL. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Councilor White. Uh, thank you. Uh, January 9th, our CAL meeting, and it's important to mention that because. One of the key topics was our budget. And we spent a lot of time, not frivolously, looking at options within the budget, where to go and how to get there, and trying to keep taxes down as best we can, and trying to have reserves to be prepared for the un unexpected, having money in the bank, as it were, like most people in the world would have. Uh, on January the 10th, I had an immigration service meeting where they're looking at uh, amalgamating Thompson, Flin Flon, Nepal, and Swan River, and all places in, the, in between to uh, help the immigrant people who are coming to our community. And these, these weather, this weather makes me so appreciative of the immigrant service people at large, because those people are being cared for, many of them, some aren't, many of them are being cared for, and if it wasn't for immigrant service 
community volunteers and paid employers. Uh, I don't know where that would go. I'm so uh, appreciative that was they do. And on January the 15th, they had another immigrant service meeting. <coughs> and uh, I've sent the minutes and the agenda out to all of you. And I think it's worth a, a look at the, the accomplishments of that group. Like they've, uh, they do some wonderful things and uh, you don't have to worry about the agenda, blah, blah. But if you look at the list of accomplishments, those things are being do done to help people in need. And obviously from a cultural perspective, it helps our community and hopefully we help them. From an economic perspective, they stay and they work and they have jobs. So that's really, really important. So that's it for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Bacha. I attended the same cow as everyone else. Um, also have attended a few shared services meetings with Municipality Swan Valley West. Um, been looking in and doing quite a bit of research uh, with regard to the past, the present, um, what potentially could work for the future, and hopefully there's something that will work with our partners to move on in, in that retrospect. Um, also attended a Swan Valley Legacy Committee uh, meeting at their request uh, from actually the municipality of Swan Valley West to uh, obtain an update uh, so we can start, uh, I guess, regular communication with our partners, our First Nations and MMF individuals here in the community so that we're all on the same page and know where everything's at with respect to the new arena project and where it is. Um, uh, and then I just, uh, to, for Councillor Megwick, on page 23 of the budget is the handy transit, if you want to have a look, and it looks like we're meeting the 20%. Okay. That's, That's everything. Okay. Uh, Councillor Powell. Okay, so, um, yep, on the 9th we attended the Cal meeting. Really good. Um, we've also had a couple of library board meetings. Um, been working on the budget with them and hoping to have that completed very soon to submit here. Um, on January 10th, we also uh, um, attended a meeting here with um, the CFL Pool and Deputy Mayor Morrow, and we included um, James Wigley, and uh, there's quite a few of us there, and it was really informative on um, just learning about a little bit more of the aspects of homelessness here in the valley and um, just some of the things that are being put in place and, and kind of getting an understanding, so we look forward to uh, things coming coming up from that. Okay, good, thank you. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, yeah, a couple of meetings. Uh, most of them were mentioned up already. Uh, the uh, homelessness meeting that Council uh, Councilor Paula just mentioned uh, with uh, some council members uh, and Mr. Wigley. Last week was the Committee of the Whole meeting. Um, we also had a shared service meeting with uh, Long Valley West that will continue. Um, I've been uh, working with the fire chief in drafting uh, a budget to present to the fire, fire board at their next meeting. And some other administration uh, tasked with there, um, along with uh, <coughs> Councillor Powell and uh, Mr. Poole attended a CSWB meeting um, regarding the uh, pilot project and uh, preparing for our upcoming medical services committee, um, collecting data and uh, for our meeting that's been requested uh, from the committee prior. And that's all I have. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, student counselor um, Campana. Anything from you? Uh, not at the moment, no. Um, okay. I'm just listening. So. All right, thank you. Uh, for myself, uh, yeah, I, I attended also with the Legacy Group and got a little bit more insight on the group is uh, working on, and it's still kind of like uh, in the beginning stages, I guess you can say, grassroots still working, and they are working a little bit on that uh, fundraising efforts and got some ideas of moving ahead. Um, some of the comments that we heard in the past was, you know, some have not been invited to attend or participate in with the legacy group, not meaning, you know, uh, any of our municipal uh, partners. And there is an opportunity for that, as was discussed with the legacy group, and everyone will hear a little bit more about that at our G8 meeting on February the 5th. <clears throat> uh, 
I also had a chance to meet with the Reeves yesterday uh, to discuss a little bit more on the GIS, and we're kind of starting to kind of get that framework kind of lined up a little bit better. Uh, we've got some numbers and all that that we can crunch and all so uh, to discuss uh, with the minister in the next, hopefully in the next month. So uh, it seems like there's some movement on that. So um, we've got some good um, uh, agreement on, on what the GIS would look like. Um, with the legacy group, um, I also discussed that with the Reeves uh, yesterday as well and told them that they had can and will participate whenever they want and uh, that invitation is open to them as, as, as far as we are as a, as a partner with the legacy group and uh, invited uh, the municipalities to be the same as well as our First Nations partners and uh, in speaking with that <clears throat> I actually had two separate meetings with Chief Janai and Chief Zastri in the last five days and re reiterated the, the fact that we're having the meeting on February the 5th and I would like them to be able to attend if they can't make sure that they send at least one member of their council. So it seems like they say that they will, so I'll keep poking them a little bit and making sure that they participate and, and come out and join us for that evening. Um, we, uh, we did discuss a little bit on the legacy group and so forth and, and they're very much interested in hearing a little bit more about that which like I said they'll have a chance to hear a little bit more about that on uh, February the 5th. On in, uh, Indigenous relations, um, as we remember one of the G8 meetings that we had in uh, Birch River, um, one of the Reeves are actually was brought up on the school division on building a relationship and uh, working towards um, uh, you know a better relation and, and reconciliation and uh, the school division had kind of prompted that so yesterday the school division met with uh, myself and the Reeves and to discuss a little bit more about that moving forward so uh, council will hear a little bit more about that in the next little bit of what we're thinking about doing and it's more kind of like a working session with all of us counselors working together in, in a session maybe having a guest speaker join us as well so that's kind of like on the on the road map right now um the meeting with uh, mr wigley on the homelessness that was mentioned um i did attend that as well because there had been some questions about um what what we've been hearing in the community because the government had made some announcement that uh, some people thought that a homeless shelter was being built um, and, and, and it just, you know, the, the information that was uh, provided. And the minister has, <coughs> did have a, a news release, but it was, I think, a little bit vague. And so no homeless shelter has been, um, uh, I guess, pointed out for Swan River. Um, they did talk about a little bit about maybe using some of the resources they have for warming shelters or whatever in Swan River with, with, you know, with the existing infrastructure, I mean like with what Manitoba Housing had and all that, but that's still down the road because the minister apparently is, is making another announcement with that. But <clears throat> Mr. Wigley had mentioned that there's a round table or task force that's working on this in the community and what I recommended that not only with gov government agencies working with uh, this task force, but also to have um, we, as myself, would participate, but also um, community groups. If it's you know the senior groups, or if it's the um, I think it was mentioned the immigration services, um, chamber of commerce, and business groups, and so forth, to be part of this uh, group, I think it would be helpful in the process for everybody to be part of the that process of dealing with some of our homelessness. So that was basically all that I had in the last couple of weeks. Um, we'll move on to uh, CEO Poole's report. I can take any questions on the written report provided to council. Uh, just to answer Councillor Medwood's question, that revenue accounts for 39% on the NDNAD. Uh, that priority list that I attached. That's just for, I don't, I'm not expecting any exercise tonight. It's just to get council thinking. There's, there's more to get put on it and clean it up a little bit to take off some of the regular <coughs> items, I guess. Uh, just a reminder for the G8 and G4 topics, if there's any additions or deletions. And, and one of the topics on the G4 
is the AMM June district meeting, so we're drafting a, a agenda with the AMM, but council will get that as soon as it's done. We should make sure we impress with our agenda. Yeah, and, and on the G5, I think, or G5, G8, we're getting close to having like a full um, uh, agenda because I haven't heard from the other Reeves yet if they want to add anything. So you got to be careful how much more we're adding to the agenda. Uh, Council Medwood. Two questions. You referenced the G4 being February 6th, but is February the, a typo? February 5th is the correct date? Yeah, it is the 5th. Okay, and it, I noticed that the agenda did not include my request for the waste reduction strategy and the food cycler to be put on there. You had mentioned that you want to bring that up as a uh, privilege item that you want to discuss. I think no, I mentioned that I wanted to have privilege. it with the regional landfill topic and waste management. Uh, we can have a discussion about that afterwards because the council right now is not on board with that. So I don't know if you're representing council or, or, or whom on that topic. I'm bringing it forward to all municipalities as something to consider for the valley. If we're considering a regional landfill, the, the strategies we have in place right now is not even going to make seven generations. So <coughs> we continue on the same path without considering other alternatives. It's not going to get us any closer to the next seven generations. We'll, we'll, discuss, we'll, we'll see how that goes in the next little bit here. Councillor White. For a, a subsequent G4, G8 and or our council meetings, I, I'll just throw the seed out. I think it'd be appropriate to ask them to get service Representative uh, Jillian McGrath, for example, to come back and say what's happening, where she's been. I guess it's a zip thing. We looked what I said on the other day, and uh, where we're going and how that's benefiting our valley. And, and a, a logical one for another G4 meeting would be the same thing. Because I'm not sure uh, our partners and other municipalities are aware of excuse me, some of the wonderful things that the uh, immigrant service team is doing. Thank you. Okay. And just the last thing regarding the, the delegation uh, earlier is we do have a lot of answers to the questions that were, yeah. that were asked and council will be provided a follow-up. Yeah, okay, thank you. Go ahead. On the uh, town on notice, have you got a, a, a SEBI timeline in mind? Uh, the last Tuesday in January. Perfect, thank you. All right, anything further? All right, uh, eight, eight point one. Resolve <coughs> to enter into an agreement with Ron Lewicki to provide billing and inspection services until January 31st, 2026. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Yes, uh, sections eight, nine, 10, and 11 reference Compensation on an hourly basis. First of all, what does RTM stand for? Ready to move. Thank you. And are <coughs> these hourly um, compensations in addition to the monthly um, compensation yes. mentioned? So that would be if you had to go out of town to do an inspection and then we would bill the person. So that gets billed directly to, so. Like if someone had a RTM that they wanted to bring in to town and they didn't have an inspection on it and we had to go out there to inspect it, then that's the rate we would pay them to travel out there to inspect it and come and back. And then that and gets invoiced to yeah. whomever's requesting it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Further discussion, uh, Councilor Bob. Is this the way up to be an increase or a decrease? In uh, this is a 3% increase, which is the same as the CBA. That's what we based on previously. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Result of the municipal services lead hand position, including the job, I'm sorry, including the attached job description, wage and organizational chart amendment, be approved and added to the Protective Services Department. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. 
Will this uh, <coughs> position be responsible for EMO plan and ensuring it's current and up to date? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Councilor Malik. So this is this a brand new organization chart? No, it's in addition to the existing organization. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Whereas the town of Swan River and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police jointly applied for a grant of $140,605.76 through criminal property forfeiture program to be used for a community surveillance project. And whereas the application Grant funding was successful in the amount of $50,000 to the town of Swan River. And whereas the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce has requested to control and operate the community surveillance project, therefore be it resolved that the town of Swan River, upon receipt of the $50,000 from the criminal for property forfeiture funds, issue a check in the amount of $50,000 to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce for the community sur surveillance project. Moved by Councillor Bach Wojcik, second by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. <coughs> 10, 10.1. Resolve the, the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 31139 to number 3113, sorry, 31196, totaling three. What are your worship? 8.4. Oh, did I miss something? Uh, sorry. Result the 2024 Council Committee appointments be received and approved <coughs> as per attached Schedule A. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, so on that there, uh, 643A remove the Chamber of Commerce as it's on the additional appointed boards in number 14. That's it? Yep. Mm -hmm. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, now we can do 10.1. Resolve the, the accounts as follows we hear about proof of payment. General accounts checks number 31139 to number 31196, totaling $324,667.28 as listed on Schedule A. Checks number 31145 was avoided due to a wrong amount, replaced by checks number 31151. And checks number three, check number three one one nine one, voided and replaced by check number three one one nine five. Payroll counts checks number five four zero eight to number five four one one, totaling ninety seven thousand eight hundred fifty dollars and seventy two cents, as listed in Schedule B. And direct deposit payments totaling twenty five thousand eight hundred thirty and fifty eight cents, as listed on Schedule C. Moved by <coughs> Councilor Bob Bobic. Seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. I have 10. Um, 31139 through 31144, these are all replaced for lost check. Is this on the part of town or on the part of the recipients? It's, uh, it's a end of your reconciliation these checks haven't cleared so then they've reissued them and the, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the reason for it anyhow see if Okanita can correct me uh, see if Okanita I think you're right that's correct yes okay um, did you have something no? okay Council Moria I'll go back no oh, the question I had was just answered um, regarding the lost checks because um, been seeing a lot more lost checks in the last uh, little while, but uh, this answered, answered the uh, bunch that were on there for tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Medwood. Okay, on the credit card 31150, there are three charges for mayor and CAO lunch meeting. Our current uh, identities allow for $20 for lunch, so are these expenses for two meals or one meal? 
Uh, right now, it's considered advantageous for the mayor and the, the CAO to meet. Usually uh, once a month. It is, but sometimes it goes three months before it happens. Right. But, uh, I'm not opposed to that, but the bill for the food, we allow for $20 for lunch. So is this the bill for two people to have lunch? Oh, sorry. Or for one person yes, to have two lunch? people. Okay. There's one that exceeds the $40 limit. That's on the 16th. Um, my next item is December 21st, Canada Post Corporation, $462 for mailing garbage schedules. Working at the post office, I can assure you, majority of those end up on a counter. So in the effort of our strategic plan of moving to paperless, can we look at either emailing them out or having them easily accessible on the website? And if they want a hard copy to maybe ask to either, well, they can either print it themselves or come to the town office so that we're not, um, also we can save the expense of mailing it out. I, like, I agree with that uh, movement. Um, the only thing is, like uh, Mr. Mullen pointed out, we are an aging population in our community and a lot of our aging population do not have access to email, to websites, to anything like that. So I think, I don't know if we can get away with totally. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harvey? Could we leave a stack just at the post office that people could pick up? No, they won't uh, permit that, it'll end up in recycling. Uh, you'd be surprised how many seniors are now on email and social media with the as a side effect of COVID, but majority of those live in uh, apartment style complexes, so they're not really needing a schedule anyways because they drop it down a chute or in a community bin and it gets picked up. Not to get into debate, uh, Councilor Borcha. No, just speaking to, to the aging population, um, I'm well aware of what one single person um, receives on OAS and CPP, and there's no extra money. If that's all you're living on, to afford Wi-Fi, a computer, and all of that, it's just, they can't afford it. Mr. Harvey. We do have them available to hard copy for pickup here, if Council wants could try that out for the next uh, go just having the hard copies here if anyone doesn't get it then they can come get it here I'd be fine with that if council's fine with that we just uh, historically if done somebody it. wants to bring a res resolution forward to that at some point in time let me do so but right now they can't get direction from council on that go ahead I can just buddy on his we can put stocks at the pool in the arena as well we've got some space okay thank you further discussion go ahead yeah, um, there are a few expenses on here still related to the fire department. Everything we're seeing on these financials relating to the fire department are going to be invoiced to the new fire board. Yes, that was all uh, up until January the 31st or anything else after that would be reconciled. Yes, go ahead. Um, December 4th, uh, it's uh, item number 31180, Adams Contracting. $20,000 for excavating Wesquisepic Development Service. What was that pertaining to? Uh, there was two buildings on the lot uh, where they had to dig in water and sewer. That was digging the buildings out to the water and sewer main. <coughs> and it's a lot further than normal. 31183, Lou McClurg. Uh, $1,045 contract for snow clearing. Was that was the that sidewalk that I had mentioned earlier on that we're going to change to having the businesses either do it themselves or there'll be a cost associated if they don't. Okay. Uh, second last one. Uh, Formal Motors is listed on here, but it doesn't give a lot of information on what all those charges were for. up those invoices and send them to you and do a itemized list of what they're for. Perfect. They're for the dump truck, but it'll list out what the different charges are for. Uh, 
And then my last one is on the Schedule A, 31172, for RJM Warehousing. What are we warehousing with RJM? Uh, what, sorry, what check number was that? Uh, 31172, it's in the um, Schedule A. RJM Warehousing, it's 249.21. This usually shop supplies, but we'll have to check the specifics of that one. Okay, thank you. I remind cops also to remember their timeline for uh, questions uh, on resolutions. For the discussion, Councilor Bob, if you have something. Okay, all in favor? It's carried. 10.2, whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provide that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for matter of assessment services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alteration <coughs> provided by matter of assessment services on January the 11, 2024 be made to the 2024 property tax roll with the resulting increases totaling $240.29 and the resulting reductions totaling $1,626.08. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor Blavik. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Result of the town of Swanover contribute $72,649.02 from the fire truck replacement reserve to the Swan Valley Fire Board for the establishment of a reserve account. Moved by Deputy Memorial, seconded by Councilor Wojciak. Discussion, <coughs> Councilor Medwood. Yeah, can we explain this 72,649.02 going to the fire reserve from the town and how much is Swan Valley West contributing? Um, Councilor, uh, or Deputy Memorial. Yes, so, so this is the, uh, the amount that's in the existing uh, reserve held by the town and through an agreement with the calculations uh, as part of the original agreement, uh, that was the amount that was calculated that was jointly contributed to by the town and municipality of Swan Valley West that is now being uh, turned over to the fire board as it was jointly contributed by both municipalities. Go ahead. Then I'm further confused because in the agreement it says, uh, I'm assuming it's section three, it further agreed that the jointly contributed <coughs> fund balance, including the year 2023 contribution, less the life saving tools replacement purchased in 2023 in the amount of 72,649.02 shall be turned over to the fire board. <coughs> After the life saving Sorry. tools were removed from that reserve account, last paragraph uh, the, yeah, the, the appendix the, yeah the life-saving tools was previously paid by the town from that reserve amount originally when they first arrived uh, during the summer um, then there was the uh, removal of the 40 the 40 or forty five thousand dollars for the grant that we had for the command vehicle um, and then the balance was should be that amount right I'm just going from my memory here okay thank you for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 11 uh, bylaws, 11.1. Result of the bylaw number 11, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish an accommodation tax be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. Yes, I have three reasons for opposing this. My first one being, I've been listening to our hotel and short-term rental owners and operators and feel they have some valid concerns that council should be addressing in full prior to continuing to purchase this, or to pursue this tax. 
Those concerns being, A, the town of Swan River has no means of regulating or enforcing this type of low and short-term rentals, such as Airbnbs, ones operated through websites or word of mouth. Uh, bylaws are just that, they're laws, which council should be enforcing as written, not picking and choosing what we will or won't be enforcing, nor should we be passing something that we know that we cannot enforce. I agree it would be unfair to hotels to exclude other forms of short-term rentals from this bylaw, and it would also show a lack of integrity on the part of council to proceed with the bylaw as it is written, when we know we have no means to fully or fairly enforce it as it is currently written. Secondly, their second concern, hotels are already being charged a business tax that serves no value for them. In addition, their property tax that we collect from them is based 100% on the income that they generate, not an assessed value for their property. I agree we need to give purpose to the business tax we are collecting, and this should be completed prior to another tax being implemented, and we should also be engaging with our business partners, our hotel owners, short-term rental owners, in the process to, one, ensure it is not replicating taxes we are already collecting, two, a fair rate and means of collecting is mutually agreeable, three, gives short-term rental owners and operators a say in how and what the tax is used for to ensure their businesses benefit from the collection since they are the ones that are doing the collecting. Uh, the other con their other concern was hotels and Airbnbs have shared that less than 5% of their bookings are due to recreation. That means 95% are not. Committing 100% of, of this proposed tax to recreation does nothing to improve or increase drawing people to our community and therefore increasing their booking revenue potential. This is another conversation I feel it should be happening with our short-term or short-term rental businesses in the community prior to moving forward on this tax bylaw. And their last concern is unfair taxation expressed by hotels and Airbnbs alike. We cannot tax ourselves into prosperity, and if we do not address this concern, we may find our short-term rentals, hotels, Airbnbs alike close their doors, and then where will our community be? Secondly, to proceed with this tax bylaw as written goes against our administration's advice and recommendations to either pause the readings until we can regulate and enforce the tax fairly on all short-term rentals as currently written, or remove all reference to short-term rent rentals that we have no means of enforcing, and we were also warned that the latter option would anger the hotel owners, operators, who would see it as an unfair tax. To proceed as the tax is currently written goes against both recommendations. Third, our strategic plan speaks to the following. Values, including integrity and transparency. Negotiate in good faith. Agreements that are mutually beneficial for all parties. Develop mutual understanding and empathy. Strive for cooperation and win-win solutions engaging with our partners, fostering a positive community environment, cultivating strong relationships, socially connected community, find our community's passion, use that to increase in community involvement. I personally do not feel that we as a council have done our due diligence in putting action to those words. Public surveys, hearings, and consultations are not enough if we're not actually going to act on the feedback we receive. I believe we need to engage our short-term rental businesses and partners in open conversation and we will and be willing to find common ground before proceeding with this tax. To do otherwise, in my opinion, goes against the very values, the strategic objectives, goals and actions we agree to uphold and calls our integrity into question. For these reasons, I cannot and will not support this tax. Councillor Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, yes, a couple points. Um, um, I always listen with uh, interest of Mr. Mullins' viewpoints on his presentations that he comes to council with on various occasions. Um, but uh, I think we we each have our own philosophies on how things are done and what the accommodation tax is trying to do and how it's collected and. Who it affects either it's the hotel owners or 
the, the patrons that go there. Um, I guess he has one philosophy, another person, and they have a different philosophy on that. Um, but then with respect to um, being able to pass on or tax other industries um, that he makes note, um, under the Municipal Act, um, it determines of what businesses and what entities that we can tax, and currently the accommodation tax, which we're dealing with, uh, is dealing with the, the hotels and hopefully the, the short-term rentals. Um, it does speak to hospitality tax, which could be uh, restaurants, but that's currently that's not on the table. Uh, we are currently dealing with the accommodation tax. <coughs> um, and then I find it interesting that he states that uh, he was a spokesman for the five uh, establishments in the valley or in the town um, on their views, but yet when you speak to um, individuals of those establishments, uh, their views um, are, I won't say significantly different, but they are different than a different point of view than what he expressed. So I'm not sure if that's a consistent message from that, but um, I do agree that maybe we need to do a little bit more work on the, uh, the uh, bylaw uh, um, in presenting um, some information back towards them. Um, on its calculations, that as was presented by the uh, owner from the Thunder Hill um, Hotel there. So before we move in sending this uh, to the Lieutenant Governor, um, after we do second reading, I propose or make a motion that we table uh, this uh, uh, bylaw motion until we uh, check it over a little bit more and dot our I's and cross our T's. Okay, uh, motion on the table. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Bobbitt. So then, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So it will be tabled to uh, our next council meeting. February 6th. February 6th. Are we still able to discuss? I know it's done. <coughs> no discussion anymore. No more discussion. It's carried to the or, or tabled to the next meeting. Result of bylaw number 12, two, or sorry, 2, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to provide for an administrative penalty scheme for parking and general bylaw enforcement. Be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Dipper Mayor Morio. Discussion on Councilor Medwood. Are we prepared and equipped to enforce the enforcement bylaw? Yes. 100%? Yes. We've been enforcing it for quite some time. All, uh, sorry, any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3. Result of the bylaw number three, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish an organizational structure for the municipality be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.4. Resolve the bylaw number 4, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend bylaw number 13, 2019, waste collection, disposal and recycling systems, bylaw number 13, 2016, uh, prohibiting graffiti, bylaw number 21, 2022, animal control, bylaw number 10, 2012, noise control, bylaw number 20, 2022, business license, and bylaw number one, 2016, rental safety standards be designated uh, that my sorry designate by bylaw conventions in them be dealt with by penalty notice and were, uh, were applicable to add that fines may be added to taxes be read a second time. Moved by <coughs> Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Yeah, this uh, involves amending multiple bylaws to which when you look at the document, it refers to removal of sections, yet we weren't provided with those bylaws to be able to read those sections. So I 
propose that we table this because it was also when we passed the first reading when I asked the question will this come to a cow for further discussion it has not hit a cow agenda so I would like for this to be tabled so that council can further review and discuss the removals so that we actually have those documents to review what is in fact being removed before we make okay. a decision so motion on the table to admit to uh, to table uh, do I have a second there Mr. Bobbick. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Mm -hmm. What do we have? Two? Did you abstain? No. Okay. So all in favor? Okay. It's carried. So then it's met. It's a uh, table to February, February. the 6th. Okay. Order your worship. Yeah. Go ahead. I believe we have two abstain abstains, and I don't. I'm not a hundred percent sure off the top of my head. Um, when there's an abstain, does that count as an A or an A? -E? Counts as nothing. Yeah, if you if you if you have something that's abstain, that means it's not voting at all. And we had three that clearly voted, and two that did uh, also clearly voted. So. Just to clarify, I requested it be tabled to a cow meeting so it can be discussed openly. And I think no, the sixth no. is a regular meeting. No, that won't happen. No, this because we're be just tabled to these February sixth. Okay, right. but that will was. it appear on the cow meeting prior to the sixth so it can yes. be openly discussed? Thank you. Okay, so that's carried. We move on, and we have no other business. Members' privilege. Council Powell. Mm -hmm. Not, uh, not that much. Um, I, just, I would like to uh, say um, I attended a funeral today um, for um, oh, no, 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 no. Mr. Atkinson. Mr. Atkinson. Sorry. Um, and just a, you know, just a, honestly, it was a great to see all the things that he's done for our community and just a big um, uh, to to his family and stuff like that. That um, he is known as. Uh, very important person in our valley, and he has done a tremendous amount of work in all of the areas of hockey and baseball and, and everything. So, just like to extend that to his family. Council, what's up? So, can I use this time now to address some of the things I wanted to, but I couldn't speak to earlier? Uh, if it's pertains to, to, to a resolution. What's that? It's my privilege. Okay, but uh, yeah. I'll be short because I have it all written okay. down. Okay, so just to address some of the things that Mr. Mullen had brought up, um, the borrowing capacity is uh, 16 million, like you pointed out, debt is roughly 7 million. Uh, obviously, uh, the passing of this accommodation tax would hope to reduce our borrowing in the future. So he's bringing up points for this. Uh, number two, Swan River is the lowest income per household. Well, this isn't being tax to our Swan River re residents, but our Swan River residents are paying it where they are going and having to secure lodging in other communities and also assisting other communities in keeping down their taxes by their communities charging an accommodation tax. Uh, so uh, this accommodation tax will hopefully help and stabilize taxes and potentially reduce taxes in the future. Number three, tax base uh, is not increasing. Yet another point why we have to look to other streams of revenue sources in our community. Um, like he pointed out, we are not growing. Um, Mr. Mullen will be happy to know much research has gone into the accommodation tax. All communities researched are charging a 5%. One community charges a $3 per night. Uh, and the revenue gained is anywhere from $140,000 a year to $638,000 a year. And these communities invest in either tourism, economic development, recreation, active living, community enhancement, or infrastructure. And some of these communities have been taking part in this since 2008 and 2013. Dauphin is new as 2020, and hopefully Swan River in 2023, like Mr. Murray said, if we have common sense. 
uh, Airbnbs are to be included in this uh, bylaw, but as Councillor Medwood pointed out, if we have to remove that and not address one of those concerns for our hotels uh, off the top to get this to move forward, then I will be making a motion to have that uh, Airbnb portion of this uh, accommodation tax removed and we'll go forth with just on the hotels which is unfortunate because I really wanted to be transparent and address that concern of theirs and have it in this bylaw. But like you said, we are waiting on Winnipeg to figure out what they're going to be doing in order to enforce those things. We want it to be proactive, but if it's going to cause an issue, then I would rather see it move forward and remove that. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out is they only say 5% of their room rate was uh, for recreation or tourism, but yet they're wanting us to invest in that, which is a good thing, but it is only 5% as they pointed out themselves. Um, and that's it. That's all I have to say on that. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Councilor White. I didn't think I'd do it, but uh, I have a science background, and I throw, people throw numbers of 5%, tempered, show me show me the numbers. Like I, I'm looking at baseball, hockey, volleyball, rodeo, seniors events, provincial events, seniors curling. Those hotels are filled, and I don't have the data, I am guessing, far, far more than 5%. Uh, I don't want to go there because I just got uh, a side of my me came out there I didn't like. Uh, I, first, I'd like to really thank the, the input I've got from council relative to questions to ask the senior crown, whatever crowns Somebody will straighten out who those crowns are and where they will be, so I have input from council. I'm waiting for input from some other councillors. I had a wonderful phone call two days ago from over here, Stan Passick, who's probably the longest living accountant in the valley, one of the more respected people in the valley. And he phones me up and says, we have an exemplary CAO at Mr. Poole. Uh, he says he's professional, he's prompt, he's organized. He says, he was so nice to work with. He says, please give our compliments to Mr. Poole. And I said, uh, Boy, what a nice one. And there's lots of those positive things out there. I'm, there's so many positive things, and I just felt that somewhere in this evening we went to the dark side. And I don't handle it. There's a dark side, but you have to talk about the good side. And that didn't happen earlier. So Stan's comments to you, comfortable to you, sir, and I suspect party teams involved. I had a phone call from the, uh, the Arburg CAO asking, though, do you guys actually give incentives to doctors to come to your town? I said, <coughs> 2024 and they're just hearing about it. So I spent some time with that person, so hopefully uh, they'll follow up. And I think it's important for me to thank uh, Councilor Morial, because in other life he's the Secretary for Medical Services. He doesn't like that job, I don't imagine. He's a Secretary for Budget Making, for letters to the doctors. But you keep asking me to do those things better, uh, Councilor Morial, so I, I send them back to him with a few items. Yes, sir, that is so appreciated by the community and, and all the municipalities because you do all that work, so thank you, sir. Deputy Mayor Morio. Deputy Mayor Morio. Councilor Medwood. <coughs> well, to continue with the uh, good things happening, I've been attending the weekly uh, task force meetings for the homelessness, and there are some good things coming down the pipe to bring supports into our community for them. Uh, I won't be able to attend all of tomorrow's meeting because I have been asked and agreed to meet with the board at the Senior Center to discuss some uh, concerns with them and see how we can make sure we are doing our best to meet those services and needs for our seniors. And I also want to speak to the fact that uh, our council does need to be thinking about waste reduction strategies because if we're planning for seven generations continuing on the same waste management structure we are it's not making seven generations as it is my great-great-grandfather was one of the first homesteaders in 1898 I'm a fifth generation Shaw as are my cousins Derek and Michael Shaw their boys they have five of them between them aren't even school age and we've got about five years left on the cell we've got open and we need in the next five years another cell open and a regional landfill so not looking into further waste reduction strategies not only are we not going to make the first seven generations for this valley we have no hope in probably making the next seven generations so we need to be taking this more seriously as a council 
and being open to waste reduction strategies being brought forward. And the one I have brought forward, yes, it does have a minimal cost up front to the municipal government compared to what we pay for recycling and waste re management as it is, but it is a one-time upfront cost, unlike our recycling and waste management that continue to run us over 400 and half a million dollars a year with regularly increasing costs to it. So we need to start thinking outside the bubble and think seven generations because what we're doing now isn't even making six. Thank you. Councillor Bob. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just to uh, piggyback on Council Powell's way, Mr. Atkinson there, so I, I, I Director Clausen there has said that there's thoughts in mind, and I think everybody's thinking that uh, there should, needs to be some recognition done with the town for this gentleman. So I think everybody keep it in mind that we work with something in the near future. Uh, just a comment to make when you abstain, I really appreciate the reason why you abstain. I don't think that abstaining is just something you do with you need to reason uh, you know, say not lack of information or, or benefit to, to me to abstain. I would like to see a reason and that's personally just for me. The landfill to speak of, I think we have some we have some room there. There's and I, I don't, don't disagree that we need to do something to look at how to chart, but there is a big cell there. We have a reserve fund that was created by uh, contaminated soil comes in there and moves off to the management to put it in. They're looking forward to do the engineering study and the management of the burn that needs to be put around it. We have the money to do this and move forward. So there is some move forward on the land. So, uh, I did uh, agree uh, with uh, Thunder Hill's comment. I do think a flat rate would be much better on the accommodation tax. I think you know, one of the question was is who's going to do all the bookkeeping and all that stuff for a flat rate would be very simple for them so I think that's something for council to keep in mind. Just a reminder that years ago when the wellness center was built that large businesses sort of like hotels the way the, the taxation was done on the wellness center was $75 a lot and a smaller mill rate. These businesses save a lot of money by the rate that that was put into. If it went to straight mill rate there would be hundreds of thousands of dollars more on their taxes. I'm not saying that is an answer to why this mill rate should be on there, but there is a reason that councils have thought of businesses over the year, and that was one of the reasons. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, nothing for me today, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Klaus. <coughs> Just two things. Um, Recreation Department, we also want to pass along our condolences to Ray's family. He was a staple in our world, that's for sure. Personally, he taught me how to play slow pitch, although it was Ray's Angel's rules. That is that is how I learned to play slow pitch, and I'm a proud Ray's Angel. Then I moved on. Um, so, yeah, that's a big loss to our community for sure. Um, good news, our outdoor ice services should be open this weekend. Yay. Weather finally cooperated. I think we've got all our water on, we just have to grind it down, and then I think we're good for, to go for the weekend. So people will be happy about that. That's all for me. Perfect, thank you. Good news. Uh, Mr. Harvey. Uh, I just want to thank the drivers for their patience out there while we're uh, hauling the central plow and snow away. And uh, just a reminder to leave our loader lots of space because he's concentrating on the snow, so I'll sneak up behind him, appreciate that. Also, Thunder Hill opened and make it there for opening day. And the day we were planning on going was closed because it was too cold, but it looks like it's warmer this weekend. So, test out that new lodge. Okay, thank you. Uh, CFO Gadita. For the check explanations, I highlight significant and unusual <coughs> items, and uh, for that formal motors, only two of the invoices were significant so the others I didn't bother giving an explanation but I emailed them all to the director of RP so forward whatever needs to be forwarded to whoever needs more information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, doing all that and, and your work and, and your spend on that. Uh, student uh, Council Campana. Um, well, I got a 
notice it was a very interesting meeting. <laughs> um, I, I was very interested, um, well, you know, by their very, you know, passionate um, argument against the accommodation tax. And um, I don't know, I just appreciate the thought that everybody put into this. I really like what Edward had uh, written um, for council here. Um, yeah, uh, not much else to say. I, I am planning on attending the G8 meeting uh, on February 5th. Good. And um, so I'm excited for that. Um, I've been checking out the agenda, but it seems pretty, pretty, pretty vague. I don't know what to expect, but uh, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm available anytime that you want to talk to me. Yeah? yeah. Okay, that's yeah. great. Thank you. Call me anytime, or if you want to send me an email too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will. See you, Paul. Uh, just to let <clears throat> council know, uh, in addition to the follow-up to the questions. Uh, just regarding Mr. Axon, we will have a street meeting policy come back for council to debate. So uh, it's basically just gives the criteria of when that's to be imposed. We don't have one currently, but if we're going to do that, it's perfect time. Um, and just a just a note, a thank thanks to King Coin for providing I think ten years plus of or just about ten years of cleaning in the office. So they're They've now moved on and we've switched to Moonlight uh, Cleaners. So looking forward to working with them in the future. Perfect. And for my, uh, not much more than what was already mentioned. I know uh, Thunder Hill Ski Club is uh, raring to go there, and I know it's been a cold weekend for them to, to have their inaugural weekend, but, uh, or not an inaugural weekend, maybe <coughs> a year, I guess. But um, my son is definitely was gearing to go, but uh, hopefully this weekend. We see lots of uh, people out on the hill. <clears throat> and with that, I uh, resolve that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.41 p.m. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. <clears throat>